Hey everybody, Jay Shlansky here from the Fifth Trooper Network. I just want to take a moment to thank you for checking out this show. Did you know that over at thefifthtrooper.com we have tons of other content, including blogs, other podcasts, all kinds of stuff. In addition, if you want access to exclusive content, you can join us on patreon.com slash thefifthtrooper and join at any level and you'll get access to uh, exclusive blog articles, access to our private Discord, and much more. So please, Check us out, and thank you so much for all your support. Welcome to the Notorious Scoundrels, a Star Wars Legion podcast bringing you the latest news, general perspective, and competitive discussion. Hello and welcome back to the Notorious Scoundrels podcast. I'm Kyle. I'm here with Jay and Mike. What's up, gentlemen? It's uh, it's Christmas time. Legion Christmas time, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. exactly what's up. Yeah, uh, <laughs> sure. It was I, you guys kind of had the same thing because you were both at a tournament Saturday as well. Um, I would, I did not even see anything and i've i actually the other thing i like doing too is waiting till this podcast to react to a lot of stuff so i really only know about like one or two things and and everything else i've kind of like i haven't even read the battle forces i've just kind of like stayed away from everything so they could react but even if i wanted to i didn't even have time this weekend to deal with it so it was like you know between the tournament we ended up doing four rounds so we were there what nine nine thirty to nine base 9 30 almost basically so you know i'm sure you guys had the same same thing <laughs> so. similar situation we looked out and the, the finals was basically uh somebody that already had an invite versus somebody that didn't so we didn't ah. really need to spend it you know oh nice kyle got his invite what he that? did wow. he yep. did yeah perfect yep um but we were uh able to have many extravaganza up on the tvs in the store. Ah. So, nice yeah um and we were able to see but maybe not hear so well what was going on yeah yeah but it was the, tough the, with just the images up there and the also trying to focus on a on a game at the same time right getting your invite yeah, yeah. for sure yeah, yeah i mean uh i said this last week but uh mike you weren't really here for this but i want to just apologize to kyle and all our listeners and i just want to admit that I was wrong and Boba is really, really good. Uh, <laughs> oh, and... I'm sorry. Kind of. Hold on. Can I? I didn't listen to last week's episode. So, yeah. um, did you say Boba was not good? Not last week, uh, but I have been for a couple months. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I was hot. I will, I will. I will forgive you for your transgressions against facts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, so so and and last last week I said to Kyle basically. What I wasn't taking into account was the new cards from from old man Boba. Like I wasn't really thinking about it in that regard too. Um, and so I I think combined with the cards and stuff, I was like, oh, like it just like I played it uh last week in preparation for the tournament, and I was like, oh, okay. Now I get it. And so yeah, he's really good. Um I came in third. Uh, I was telling these guys before we started recording, I'd lost to um, Isaac, who ended up taking the whole thing. And he was just running this Cody triple barks Z6 fire support monster uh, of a list, which it ended up coming down to the last bit, too. And then he went on to the to the championship round. But like um, that was a really good list. He's a really good player. And so he's got his world's invite. So uh, I'm very excited for him. Um, he'll be at world's and good guy. And, uh, you know, we had a great tournament. Everybody was super chill and we ended up having 20, which was great. And, um, and actually I would only say about six to seven were people who I'd seen in the circuit up here. Hmm. So like 13 were people I, I was meeting for the first time and who I hadn't seen. So that was, that was really cool. Um, so so that was nice um and yeah i i got third which was great uh and i and uh yeah and then and clones took it which was cool and it was a clones list i'd never seen before um and man fire support and 
even after cover and everything I could do to keep my some of my things out of harm's way, I was still rolling eight to ten dice. So that was that was crazy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> even Boba with dodges and heavy cover and, and like everything I could do. I mean, listen, there was, I'll tell you, there was this one roll. You know, you have those moments where he rolled and he got eight hits through on Boba after cover and two dodges. Uh, and I was just like in my head going, yo, he's cooking his dice. Like, what is this? This is crazy, right? And then I literally rolled Boba and I got all paint on the defensive side. So I was like, all right, never mind. Like, I, good thing I didn't say that out loud or say anything out loud because it was just like, all right, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I will say, like, as someone who picks up 20 dice and rolls them more often than most in this yeah. game. Um, the amount of people that are like, wait, you got 14 hits and tilts? Like it's something that doesn't have, like is not an yeah. expected outcome when when I do that is high. And <laughs> and I think uh, people just like need to kind of like reevaluate what those situations yeah. actually are. Because like the expected outcome of like a fire sport with like, two to three aims backing it up it's more than 10 yeah yeah <laughs> most, yeah. most yeah. of the time mm -hmm. you know like it's it's high and um i just feel like every time i get into one of those situations and i like fire off one of those shots my opponent is like oh well that's that's way more dice than i thought i'd ever be yeah, you know yeah, rolling yeah. as a result of this attack and i was like well this is actually kind of low average <laughs> you, know, <laughs> yeah. low, low, you know and um yeah so, it it's, took, it's 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 interesting because I think there's some calibration there that people just aren't there used is. to a lot of the time. Well, yeah, and I think, you know, like I had I had told you guys before, like one of the first lists I played was a a version of that Yoda R two C three PO triple barks, where it didn't have all that like firepower behind it, right? And so, and most clones lists I haven't seen that like pure firepower, and this is like. You know, he had the um, the barks with the with their weapons, and then he had Z six clones with Ames and Cody, and like so, it was just like there was a lot going on. And I think the first couple time, the first two times he did it in my head, I was like, "Dude, what?" And then you know, like I said, Boba rolled one really good, and I was like, "All right, I'm fine." You know, like everything's okay here. Uh, but like after that, I was like, "Oh, I see what's happening." It just took me a second to like register what was happening because it's yeah. it's a lot of dice that you're not generally not dealing with, right? Not you're right. like, yeah, you're, you're like, okay, I'm gonna put Boba in this position. There's going to be two coming through, most likely like three on the high end. And he's going to be all right because I'm full health. I've got a couple dodges, you know, like and then so I did that in my head and, and it was my fault. I put Boba in a position where he was able to range three fire support, you know. And so, like, you know, I put Boba in a position for that to happen and going, all right, I'll put Boba there. He's definitely going to shoot him with this unit. There's, you know, even with Z6s, we're talking maybe four like but i got dodges like so it'll be two and he's full health like i'll be all right and then he did he shot with the bark and then fire support him. and i was like oh my god <laughs> like, yeah. all of a sudden it's surge hit yeah yeah, like, yeah 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 with yeah. 17 to 18 dice yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um so i, I mean, think uh, he, he got like 14 two went to cover two went to dodges and i you know i i took you know i took 10 uh and i saved them all but uh, yeah, it definitely wasn't. <laughs> yeah, that made me feel better. I was like, "Oh, Boba, you're so good." Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anytime you're rolling double your health pool in defensive yeah. dice on one attack, you're just like, mm, "I could pretty easily just lose this character right now." Yeah. You yeah. Know? <laughs> like, I'll tell you, 100 percent made me glad I wasn't playing Rebels. I'll tell you that much. When my, <laughs> yeah. A lot of my stuff had red saves, so that was good. And yeah. Bosk had seven health, so you know that made me feel a lot better the way things were yeah. going. But but you know, um, but yeah, it was a great game. Congrats to Isaac, he did great, and so it was a great tournament. Uh, good people, like yeah, we just had it was it was a really nice time. So I was really excited. Um, I've been really excited to play competitively again, you know, and and like yeah, I still got the itch. Uh, and so I'm I'm really happy and really excited about playing. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I mean I also had fun. I got to I got to go up to Mike's local store, which I had not been to yet. Yeah. Um, oh, nice. Game Castle College um, Park. 
That's right. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, Conveni- <laughs> conveniently right next to the Starbucks. Yes, um, which, which, which and, and judging judging by the amount of cups that were on your table when I walked over, you <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, yep, Oh, that's how he wins. Yep, <laughs> just, it's, it's the secret. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I ended up playing Anakin Padme, which was the right call. Um, so, um, and I faced some. I, I think the scariest thing I faced was uh, a variant of that Shadow Collective list that Kentucky Dan was running at Nova open yeah. where it's like all the pikes with all the caches. And mm. I mean, it, it was, it's really hard to kill anything, anything, in that anything. List. Yeah. Like, I managed yeah. to kill, uh, we were, it was one of those situations where we ended up on VAPS and we both had 800 points and we were like, all right, now what? <laughs> <laughs> um, what ended up happening is I basically, I don't know, like if, if how he was playing was like a draw was acceptable to him or he was just like being really passive generally, but basically he just like backed all his stuff into a corner after he um, did his vaps. So I like attacked him into the corner sure. and it, it ended up kind of working out because there was really, you know, by the time you pack your entire army into the corner, like you're not working with a big space. Um, your flexibility really only, like, is yeah. yeah there was really only like one terrain piece over there so i kind of went around both sides of it and i was able to get some open shots on pikes and i had one where it was like it was a phase 1z6 so not notionally the scariest unit but i double aimed with anakin i aimed with pat may uh, and then i took an aim on like a nearby at, at echo or something and i i did a 10 dice shot with like four aims and i got i converted like nine of them yeah know? i mean I I, let's not let's not do discredit to the to the z6 unit a z6 unit yeah. backed up by surge tokens is like five and a half hits on average yep like like before aims uh it's not quite that high um oh uh, here we go kyle with this my, my, my adding the it depends body? on if you have the extra body it's 38 yeah, maybe, maybe it's, it's 38 it's for five. eight which is yeah. slight is slightly less than five um but it's, it's um, like pretty close um, if you if you add the extra body, it's it's slightly over five. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe that's what I'm thinking of yeah. as far as the math goes. And you no, I think it, I think you're thinking of point, real life. So. I think you're thinking of how things roll, not statistically on paper. No, I'm definitely like, still looking. You know what? Because Kyle isn't. Uh, he's not like looking at the table and factoring the angle of the table for when the <laughs> dice fall on it. And, you know what? Maybe they hit that piece of terrain and it got yeah. an extra die in there. You know. Anyway, Z6 go boom. I killed a pike yes. unit. Statistics, uh, statistics are bullshit. Yeah. So. Statistics are legion. Yeah. Um. Um, yeah. So that was enough to like to squeak that game out. But um, yeah, got the job done. Padme's, I'm not dropping Padme again. She's awesome. I think the thing that she does is that the issue, if there is an issue with Anakin, is that he doesn't have any tricks. And Right. She puts the tricks in the Anakin list. Otherwise, you're just a list that is, I'm gonna put this in air quotes, playing fairly. Um it's a it's just an the, efficiency machine, basically. Yes, in that yeah. you don't have any effects that actually like do stuff in the command phase, right? Um, whereas like most other lists in Legion have things that that happen, you know, whip cold or, or Text, yeah, right? command, command cards right. that do splashy ish things yeah anakin doesn't have any else. right anakin it's just tokens distributing tokens sharing tokens generating tokens it's like that's an anakin list basically and yeah. then he acts as a linebacker if necessary or i personally i like to attack things with him i know that's I know you different do. than I your play you style um which, by the way, is another reason that I have discovered that I like Padme is she gives you a little more flexibility to like go out there and start swinging at things with Anakin because she can generate the tokens for your clone ball. Yeah, for sure. Um, so obviously, if Anakin's also in there, you get more. But um, really, yeah, <laughs> I like to swing slash throw Anakin's lightsaber. So not as much as Keegan, but I do like to do it. Mm. Um. Anyway, uh, yeah. So. Uh, besides tournaments this weekend, we also had Mini Stravaganza, where they previewed a bunch oh, of stuff, which is that be... little thing. Yeah, so that's going to be the meat of this show, the beef, the beef yeah. if you will. Um, do you like meat? Uh, yep. Uh, they they gave us some specific rules for uh, really four separate things: two battle forces, Geonosians, and Inquisitors. Mm. We essentially oh. got like a 
No? What? I would just like to highlight perhaps the most important rules drop that I, I have a suspicion we're going to glance over. Okay. Uh, and that is we have the full release of Special Operations. Okay. Oh, who I cares? I completely forgot. Yeah. I care. Yeah, I know you I know you both did because you, you guys didn't talk about it at all in pre-show. Uh, no. But I'm super excited. Uh, Get out of okay. your mind. <laughs> why, why am I out of my mind? Just go I, play Kill Team. Like why why are we messing around? There's already something that does this. It's called Kill Team. Just go play that. I don't want to play Space Marines. I want to play Orcs. You don't have to play the Space Marines. You can play Orcs if you want it. <laughs> but I want to play Orcs. You know? Oh, yeah. All right. Do that in Shatterpoint. Yeah. Go Actually, play Shatterpoint. There, there, are, there are no art troopers in Shatterpoint presently. That's so. unfortunate. Is that is this the whole reason you're playing that game? This new <laughs> game version of Legion. No, I actually think it's really fun. I played, I like played like twenty games. I've heard, I've heard good things about it. Um, um, I, I did my, I did not mean to diminish Spec Ops with my okay. forgetfulness. I did. I'm really just um, giving you guys crap because yeah, I, I, actually... I knew, I knew that you guys <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, like it wasn't even on your radar. No, uh, I, I'm clearly diminishing it. I could care less. Yeah, I think I think a lot of like people that are in the competitive mindset probably feel similarly. Um, it's okay, okay, it's definitely not a competitive game mode. Nope. It is a fun game mode that I think that you can, as as someone who's like presently cultivating uh, like a group of guys at the store to like come in every Thursday, I think it's like a fun thing that ch- changes things up. Just play whatever the other version. Well, we we want to play Legion, you know. Right? No, but what was the, what's the other skirmish? Yeah, just play uh, that. Sk- skirmish, skirmish is, is a terrible game mode. Yeah, but it's easy for new players. You don't have to reteach them an entirely different game that's now based on measurements instead of like how Legion works. Okay. We can move on now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, if you're in, if in Spec Ops is something you're interested in, go check out the full rules on the site. All right. Um, well but yeah, as far as uh, Legion <laughs> stuff, not related to Spec Ops or Skirmish. Sorry, Mike. We got you're it. fine. You're fine. We're going we're gonna to sort of circle back around to this at a later point when I bring uh, up some other points. But not if I have okay. anything to say about it. We won't. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. No, Go I think ahead. you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna dig in hook, line, and sinker, and you're not okay. even gonna know. You know what? That could happen. Uh, seeing as I'm now playing Boba, so I yeah, anything's possible. Yeah. Um. Anyway, via notions, uh, two battle forces and inquisitors. Yep, and, and then, then, and then previews we got of other, previews yep. of other minis, basically, but like no rules. Which, of course, we can yep. talk about that too. But uh, let's let's start with the meat first. The, the stuff we have, like actual rules knowledge for. Yeah. Uh, also, it's worth mentioning that uh, they confirmed that none of these. So the battle forces are legal now, immediately. Yep. Like um, last Saturday. Correct. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, we were joking at the tournament that if someone had somehow managed to bring, you know, like ten wiki units, that that would be allowed. Um, yep. Because I think technically it would be. It yep. would have been. So yes. I, I don't think anybody had that many wikis prepped for such a situation, but yep. I can't. I can't imagine it will take some people long. I actually own enough wookies to run uh, a wookie battle for you know i'd like to uh, i'd like to say that like that's one of the changes that i don't think i ever really had an opinion on uh that they made that like now that i've seen it in action i just i think it was a fine change which was the the no release like no um no plastic release uh no the the no 12 the two, week. two week two week release oh, yeah, 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 yeah. More, you know thing before a tournament like i i don't think it affects anything um i think i think that really depends uh i think i think like two weeks before your local store tournament is very different than two weeks before worlds um from a preparation standpoint yeah uh oh yeah 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 listen if you i just my thing is like if you want to bring something brand new like that you've had no reps with to a tournament like be my guest man like who like i I mean you're at the same disadvantage as someone else i think you know i think that's debatable i Um, think it's debatable too just because there are you know people in the community that like test things and stuff that likely have had reps that other people uh, i haven't seen any like uh based on what we're getting i haven't seen any 
any evidence of people testing no. this. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, oh, all right. Uh, wow, man. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry, everybody. That was uh, sorry. <laughs> that was a joke. I'm sorry. <laughs> Was it? I, that didn't sound like a joke, Jay <laughs> All right, let's move on. Um, the uh, sorry, Kyle. I'm trying to keep us level here, guys. <laughs> okay, so the ba- the two battle forces are currently legal now. Yeah. Um, there will be no plastic releases for the rest of the year. They confirmed. Yeah. The, Perfect. The first we can talk about the the pros and cons of that in a minute uh the first thing that will be released i believe is gene oceans which could be q1 of 2024 but could also be later than that um the other stuff uh i'll just read so these are ballparks obviously um inquisitors q2 2024 um commandos mid 2024 Range Troopers mid-2024. Crab Droid late 2024. Uh, new Rebel Sculpts possible late 2024, possible 2025, and then reprints of old stuff 2025. So, um, It's a release sh- schedule. I mean, at least we got something. Yeah, I mean, they're giving us ballparks, which is good. Yeah. Um, yeah. It was more than I thought we were going to get, to be completely honest. Yeah. And 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 I was my expectations. I thought were actually pretty reasonable. Um. So I'm I'm pleasantly surprised. Yeah, I'm I'm a little bit surprised that there's nothing before Christmas. It I'm okay like, with it. I know you're personally okay with it. It seems like an odd business. Yeah. Uh, thing you know, like retail 101 is that you you got to have something for people to buy to put under the tree that's new. I mean, I think that this is obviously probably not an active choice they made um considering that legion is not the only like yeah. mcp and, and shatterpoint Shatter are Point both are in the same boat uh yeah. suggests to me that there's some sort of production issues that like like obviously yeah that's not an active choice they made it, it's probably yeah. dictated by some sort of circumstances outside their control or at least yeah. some sort of circumstances that affect all three game lines whether it's in their control or not. Yeah, I guess maybe outside their control is not fair, but like like yeah. there there are things that maybe are more pressing or something. I I have no idea. Or but... something went wrong or who knows. Yes, yeah, but absolutely. The point is that this is not like this is not them quote unquote neglecting Legion or whatever because there's no plastic being released for their other game lines either for the rest of the year. So Right. Um, uh well no, that's not true. Um, there's, a, there's a card pack for Shatterpoint. And then uh, uh, MCP has the new core set coming out in yeah. o- in October. Oh, okay, but I guess like between, I mean, October yeah. is next month, basically. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just, yeah. I'm just saying, you know, sure. but but yeah. but just to be clear, I because okay. I'm sure somebody's gonna like hit us somewhere. <laughs> but <laughs> but actually, yeah. actually, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but no, you're right. There's no nothing after like October, nothing for the holiday season, really. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And to be clear, the Shatterpoint pack that is supposed to be coming out the, in November, the release date on the website is February 2024. So, okay. But I would say, so I'm of two minds. I think one, I'm aligned with Mike, like from a, from a gaming standpoint and a competitive standpoint. Yeah. I think it's fine. Um, from a it does concern me a little bit from like a new player perspective like hey if if a new player saw genotions at gen con or something or heard that they were coming and then they're like oh they're not coming out for like another like two quarter three quarters like that's that's rough you know and and i think you you have the potential of, of losing some of the newer but, but I, I don't know a hundred percent on that. Right. Like I may, I, that's just a guess of mine. That's not like, you know, anything substantiated. It just seems. I think there's enough in the game that new players are probably already overwhelmed by the choices. I, I would think, I don't well, know. May, maybe, I, I guess, I guess, yes, that could be too. I think there's just a couple of types of new players. Like some new players come in because of Ewoks. Like as sure. an example, sure. right? Yes. Like <clears throat> there's particular uh releases that encourage people to join and and maybe it's okay that it delays it out another 
six months, but you know, it's just, it's, and, and I think you're right, Kyle, based on the fact that there's no plastic coming out for any of their games, that leads me to believe that there was something bigger happening, whether that's, you know, maybe they were seeing saturation and they're just trying to hold to, to like let the market even out. Maybe they had to change um, plastic manufacturers and that's a whole process because you got, you know, there's a lot that goes into that. Like it literally could be anything. So, you know, I, I, I would guess based on the fact that they're a company that wants to make money uh, that that was not something designed particularly to not have stuff out for Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not like, I'm not like worried from a Legion specific attention perspective. Um, You know, we'll see if this, if this is just like a one-time, like, whatever switching production facilities or some something six to nine month gap and then we're gonna get you know at least something like once every three to four months uh from now on i think that's fine um i think if we get like if we ever got into the place where we consistently have to wait like six to nine months between releases i think that would be a problem for game growth reasons. yes but um i don't think we're there at the moment yeah particularly I- if you if you look at this proposed release schedule like there's there's a lot of stuff in yep 2024 if, if all of this hits when uh when they're ballparking it yeah so. I, I guess to be clear none of those things that i said were like deep-seated concerns yeah, yeah, yeah. they're just more of you know it's just something to talk about because that's what we have to do sure yeah it's it's not a good look um i don't i don't mind like it's, we don't need something every month no and in fact oh, I, yeah I don't want that. something every month, to yeah. be honest. Um, but yeah, I, like, I so, like once a that. quarter, you yeah. Know, if at some point they get yeah. to a point where that's like a thing, I think that'd be reasonable. I, I think yeah. you would have to do it like kind of how they used to do it, where they would have multiple, like you would have like Veers and Leia come out. Like, so right. if you did it yeah. once a quarter, you could have, like they did kind of with Ewoks, but like, you know, you just have, okay, here's three four things like or five th- you know yeah. whatever four things right. one for every faction here's something every quarter like you know or or alternating maybe it's galactic civil war and then it's you know then it's clone wars and you know you could go back and forth you know uh, 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 some sort of something like that would work but anyways let's talk about this stuff yeah let's dig into it all right so we're for those of you listening to audio we're on uh youtube showing what we're talking about so if you want to top over you could yeah so genosian warriors soldiers of the hive so these are a core unit for republic which is cool well for separatists for separatists. separatists i'm sorry what did i say i said republic, republic. Yes. The, opposite, Separ- the opposite yeah yeah the opposite yeah. separatists <laughs> sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry yeah. uh which hey more core for for uh clone wars is good yeah yeah, um, there, there's there's two interesting things about this. Um, well, there's really three. The first is these sculpts are great. Yep, they're beautiful um, minis for sure. They are, and they did the MCP style thing where they're like kind of building the flying poses. Oh, in I with, love it. Yep, like the smoke trails and stuff like that instead of flight Even stands. They don't, you know, they are flying with wings, but sure. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe they're like. Maybe they have exactly jetpacks the in their feet, and that's why they can go jump three. I who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's like a mucus trail or something there. After all, like insecty. To... Anyway, maybe it's uh, they got caught in a spider web. Regardless, sure. Back down. Yeah, it looks great. <laughs> is the point? Uh, no flight stands. Yay! That's awesome. I agree. Um, yeah, <laughs> making them just straight droid core, I think, is great. That you don't have to like worry about because they're, these are literally the ones that like created the droids. So yes. I think this makes sense to me that you don't have to fiddle with them being mercenaries and slot limits. And yeah. Them. Like you can just interchangeably take them in droid lists. Um, yeah. It's also not, did they say that there will be a Geonosian battle force? Or I, uh, see, I know so, people were assuming that the fact that they're actual, like just straight separatist yeah. units leans me to think that maybe that's not going to be a thing. So I, I, 
I want to say that they have mentioned Gene Ocean Battle Forces for sure on stream before. I'm like 98% on that. Okay. What I can say is that I'm pretty sure that they did not say anything about a Gene Ocean Battle Force over the course of many Stravaganza. So, Including during a segment specifically about set battle aside forces. for Battle Forces. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that. Um, I think anything's on the table. I think it's possible that there was one and then they decided not to, or, yeah. or like, you know, like maybe there is one and they just didn't talk about it, or maybe there never was one. I have no idea. Um, I think that at this point, I, I'm not sure they need one. To be I don't honest. think they do. Yeah. Um, I think this is a great way to do it. I mean, uh, um, yeah. Like, I, I like this. I think it, this definitely opens for other things, like maybe Gungans being a core unit in in Republic, right? Like, that would be neat. And um, as much as I I didn't know how I felt about Battle Forces at first, but now I, I end, they're fine and I like them and they're, good, they're a good idea to, like, change up the game. Uh, but, like, like, how many of those do we really need when we could you know i think there's a way to just build it into regular list building right that you could just hey yeah just take these guys as core it's fine you know i think i think it's good yeah yeah and i think um we haven't looked at him yet but Pablo the lesser actually sort of like the way his unit card is um <laughs> built <laughs> <laughs> uh the way his unit card is built it almost is like a pseudo battle force built into his his unit card i feel like um anyhow so it, it's kind of similar to like the ewok commanders where they just they do really specific things for geo notions yeah and then well and even like b2s and stuff right? with poggle yeah yeah um so yeah I, there's enough flavor and uniqueness i think in the actual units and the, the fact that you can just directly take them in a droid list which has a lot of flexibility to it um that yeah i don't know that they need a specific battle force it'd be neat to see some like generic gene ocean command cards but it doesn't seem critical no. yeah have it, have yeah work. yeah i mean yeah so anyways this is my first time uh reading this card i did hear about the jump three which listen i think it's dumb and i'm going to tell you why okay i, part, I don't the even know or the height um yeah yep yes. and so <laughs> Here's my problem. So they can jump to the friggin' moon, and then air speeders are two. Speeder two, yeah. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, uh, it seems something that could go in low orbit, uh, an air speeder, uh, only goes to two, height two, but these guys with wings, they could go higher. Like, they could go to space if they wanted, basically, at this point. So I think... I would like to go out there and attempt to set the tone um, for the fact that I think all of the releases we're going to see are clearly built with the maybe aforementioned AMG design philosophy, I think, um, which is very different than everything else we've had up in this game up until this point. Um, and I think that that's a good thing in that, like, the units feel very shatter pointy, and I think that that's really cool. But on their face, they also seem a little unbalanced. I actually don't think the gene notions are. I don't think so either. I think the gene notions are fine. Yeah, I think so too. Listen. But I do, I do think they fall into the category of like, well, and all this stuff does, where it's got like, it's got some stuff that like I definitely never thought we'd ever see in this game. To me, with the jump thing, like I, I know it's weird thematically that they can like go higher than a. T forty seven, but how often do you actually? Yeah, across uh, high listen, or yeah, 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 yeah. It's not a. That was not a comment towards gameplay. Yeah, it yeah. was a comment towards ridiculousness. And I, I don't think the ridiculous thing is the is the number on the jump. I think it's the, the ridiculous thing is a free action. Yeah. Well, both are. Yeah, both are ridiculous. I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, and, and Mike, I, as someone who plays Marvel Crisis Protocol. I don't mind ri like ridiculous stuff coming out because everything's ridiculous in Marvel Crisis Protocol, right? Yeah. P the problem I have is if this is what they want to do, okay, great. We need a 2.0 then for every for stuff that's come before 
so that we're it's all on an even playing field then like if you want to be if you want to have this philosophy i'm i'm all on board i i love marvel crisis protocol right and shatterpoint looks really cool i just haven't had a chance to play it yet um but the problem is if i it's shutting anything else out that i loved from before because it's like well that's not as good or that doesn't you know ramp so up these guys still let me, rebel troopers just sure so. yeah so let me let me just stop yeah, this yeah. flow for a second because there is really nothing about g and oceans at least in this oh yeah conversation sorry i'm gonna get to inquisitors but there's nothing at least about g and oceans that look like in any way inconsistent i'm sorry from yes. the process that has been used for legion units i so I, far i think they're well the the free action the free jump thing to, yeah to allow for three moves i think is yes. um i mean that's certainly the most unique thing about them but i also don't think it's like that crazy i mean it, yes stuff like this has been limited to like command cards like reptilian mm -hmm. rampage but it's also not that really different from what is i mean speeders get a free move and they can triple move so these are essentially like a cross between a trooper unit and a speeder, which like uh, it, this doesn't seem that wild. No, me, no, I understand what you're saying, like overall, right? Like if you yeah. we look at this holistically, I'm saying it, it, from playing MCP and like hearing their design philosophy, we're starting to see these little things that are cropping like uh, Mando's gun that can shoot anybody uh, what, no matter what, like that are ignoring core rule things like that's it seems like it's a slippery slope like sure it may not be terrible right now but it's going to get to a point where something else is going to come out and it's going to be like well and then they're going to be like well we did this you know free jump three like and everybody was fine with that so then this must be fine i mean that's what that's what design and development is i, I think it's really cool um frankly yeah, i actually I think, really I like think, notions personally I, I do too. I think I think they're really interesting. I think um, the, the okay. design space is like, yeah. I mean, yeah. this is not my comments are not a dig at Gen Notions. I think they're cool as well. I think my my concern. All right, let's is, keep it. Let's keep it to Gen Notions then. Uh, don't tell me what to do, Kyle. I'm, well, no, I'm just trying to like. <laughs> I'll burn well, we're going to talk about other. We're going to talk about the ground. We're going to okay. get to other stuff. You're right. right? Fine. 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 We have a lot of stuff to talk about, which is just going to um, prove my point. So yeah, let's get to that other stuff. Gene oceans are basically. Hang on. We, we all we all we've hit so far in gene oceans is no. Like, we're moving on. Jump three. <laughs> um, basically, they're flying rebel troopers that can move three times. Yeah, and I think uh, they're ranged two. And they they deny cover basically when they're on higher terrain. Um, yes. Yeah, and and mm -hmm. I I do like. I mean, they definitely clipped their wings, uh, pun intended, with with the way down. Yeah. You know, so that was good. You can't you know grab a recover and then just like. <laughs> I mean, you sort of can though because yeah, and you can do it on jump before you right. Right, so they can right. still do like the GU mastery thing where they double move to grab. Yeah, it but they couldn't then. Mo they but then they away. couldn't then triple move, like and make it even more. Unless right, you yeah. use Sunfax card, but yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so before they're going to be super good at recover. Let's no. Well, so, so, so tell me recover. exactly how they're fine again, Kyle. What were you saying? Because they're rebel troopers with no defensive tech for yeah. forty-five points. Mm -hmm. When when you pick up those twelve dice with those fire support, this unit is gonna evaporate. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a four model unit with white saves and no defensive tech. Um, okay, uh, I do think like and range out three. of out of every core unit in the game that presently exists, what this unit card says to me, like I know that this unit on the table is gonna play more like any other unit in the game like core unit in the game like like we see them in the movies like you're going to be putting them up on terrain to do the thing every time yeah you know and and i i think that is that's awesome yeah i think that's from above is a really cool keyword yeah it, the, the way it reads i think it basically means just that if you're higher you get the thing is that I think yeah, it depends on like the RG text. I think uh, is the, yeah, so, like the, the, the does... wording is a little awkward, but yeah. I think that's essentially the premise: is that if you're if you're higher than your target, that you ignore you get sharpshooter too, basically. Essentially, yeah. Um. Um. Okay. 
Cool. Are the are the weapons on the next slide, Jay? Yep. Sweet. Um. Yeah, these are also very cool. I think just from like a, I think the Sonic Cannon Warrior being like a thing that like you blast them and then like it does the like boom, 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 boom thing and it scatters them it scatters, is, yeah. is like, you know, I don't know. It just it's oozing with theme, which I yep. think is great. Yep. Yeah, and you can you can dump them out in front of their cover, um, which Junations are going to be super good at like denying cover. Yeah, that seems like their thing. They're super mobile and they're good at denying cover. They are made of peanut brittle, which is. You know the thing that offsets those other things, and they're short ranged. So, um, I actually think there's an interesting thing I noticed earlier about the force pike. Uh, they they said that this is a flip card and that there's an overrun attack on the other side. I yeah, think on the stream there is, yeah. So it's interesting because it says when this unit performs a move action, you may flip this card before placing the movement tool. Um, so I don't know if it says that on the other side, also. But if it does, then you could potentially overrun and perform a melee attack in the same turn. Um, yes. Because you'd, you'd use your first move to overrun. Uh, you would um, then, as your second action, perform a move, which means you could flip it over to the force pike side, use your free action jump. You still got one action left, which is a melee attack. So um, who knows what the overrun attack looks like? But it's possible that you could do like the swoop bike thing where you, you know, overrun and then also do like a normal attack. Um, obviously, you could just shoot pistols too. But it seems like this Force Pike Warrior card is designed the way that it's worded because it doesn't say like flip this card at the beginning of your activation. Yeah. It says when you perform a move. It seems like the way that it's worded is almost designed to like enable you to make a melee attack and do an overrun on the same turn. Yeah. Um, I think I think that that's almost likely just because you're only going to be able to use the dice on the upgrade card for the overrun attack with the way right. overrun works. So like it's probably only going to be like two or three. Right. So, yeah, who knows? We didn't yeah. see the other side, but that's yeah. Most yeah. overrun attacks are like that. <laughs> um all right, cool. Cool. Look at those guys. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at Sunfac and Pogo, Pogo the Lesser now. Pogo. 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 Like Boggle, but Pogo. Yep. Right. Right. Whatever you say. Uh, yeah. So let's take a look at their cards. <laughs> so they both got free action jumps as well. Yep. That's good. Yep. Uh, are we going to are we going through each card? Is that what you guys want to do? We can just hit like the diff. I mean, they've got all the Sunfac has all the Gene Ocean keywords, right? He's got the free action jump. He's got death from above. He's got weighed down and scale. Yep. Um. So we can just hit what's different about him or what's interesting and unique about him. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah. He's got the direct Gene Ocean warriors. That's cool. Uh huh. And retinue Poggle the lesser. Yep. That's great too. Surges. He's 90, he's 90 points. Mm -hmm. Seems a little bit steep for this profile, but um he does come with a command card. Which... He does. Which is and it's a good command card. Yeah. It's like super no time for sorrows, basically. Uh right. Uh we can, we can hit it on the next slide. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. On the next slide. yeah. But Poggle is a, uh, and then Poggle's essentially your support commander. He's only got four health, but he's got red saves. Um, he's got compel core separatist separatist alliance trooper. I, I think that keyword is hilarious. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's I, a lot I, of text. Why doesn't he just have compel core? I don't. Or just compel? I don't know. Is that what you're talking about? I just like uh, the only thing he can actually compel are Geonosians, so I don't understand why it doesn't say compel core Geonosian trooper, unless, obviously there's, like, future proof in here, but, like, it doesn't really make sense that he's, like, compelling the core from, like, a different species that aren't Geonosians, so, like, why, uh, yeah. I don't know. It could be because they didn't want it to work on pikes if you run pikes and droids, I guess. Oh sure, sure. Okay. I, I think that's the saying. only only other thing besides Gene Oceans that this would actually work on if you just did compel core. Yeah. Um, but it's not I mean droids don't really take pikes anyway. So I don't I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I guess 
it's yeah anyway this is for geo notions <laughs> yep <laughs> which they will need because they only are only courage one and they're not droids so maybe they they like even if they're suppressed they still get a move and a shoot if you want it sure but you want them like move shooting and moving or move move yeah. shooting or move move moving um if you're paying because you're, you're i mean you're paying a premium for that speed so yeah hmm. i think them being suppressed would be bad bad for business i think um it's definitely less bad than like a normal core unit that goes from essentially two actions to one. Oh, a hundred percent. I think it's a lot better. <laughs> it's like, it's like snows, right? You know, when yeah. snows are suppressed, they can still like move attack. Yep. It's going to be the same with these guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. Entourage B2s. That's cool. That seems on theme for Poggle. Yeah. Um, I don't know how like B2s aren't great right now, so I don't know how useful that actually is, but um, if we uh, ever get a points cut or something. I, uh... When we get into the command cards, we can talk about it. I actually there's think... one command card that is super good for B2s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's actually two that are super good for B2s. Yeah. One's super good, one is interesting and also pretty decent. I don't think it like makes B2s good, but anyway. Yeah. yeah. And he's got override too, which plays into that, I guess. He definitely feels like a commander that kind of um if you're planning on running Geonosians and you still want to run droids, I think you might have to take is maybe strong. But this is this character is clearly meant to tie Geonosians and the rest of the faction together. Correct. Um, yeah. And if you're if you're not trying to do, and this is kind of what I meant by like Poggle creates like a little bit of a battle force, and that I think that if you're taking Poggle, um, you're really you're you're kind of building like a combined arms battle force that is both Geonosians and droids, um, which I think is really cool. And like his unit card kind of gives you the reason to do that. Mm. Yes, I agree. All right. So we're looking at their command cards now. So I guess we'll look at Sunfac first. So one pet brutal enforcer after issue order steps, uh, up to two friendly Geonosian war units at range two of Sunfac may free jump three. Sunfac gains agile one and demoralize one this round. This is what I mean with the yeah. I was I thought you meant uh. It was we serve the queen. You're right. Yes, this is like no time for sorrows, but probably better. Yeah, well, it's faster move. Yeah, that you can also jump on. Yes. Yeah. Um. So yeah, this is your and it's a one pip. It is. So yeah, after your uh after your Genosian unit double moves to grab the middle box, then you play this and you move mm -hmm. them back, and then it's a one pip. So you also probably get to immediately double move them again. <laughs> well, yeah, I think the the. The one drawback here, and I think so, Sunfax got direct, so maybe it's less of, less of yeah. an issue than this card maybe makes it out to be. Is like the unit that you're moving may not have an order token, right? Correct. Um, yeah. Right. So I guess I guess maybe that's not true because uh, up to two friendly units at range two, they're gonna direct they're gonna, they're gonna still yeah they're still yeah. gonna be at range two. So yeah, um, yeah. it is definitely good. It's good. Yeah, it makes yeah. them even more mobile. Um. All right. Yeah. So we'll look at Poggle the Lesser's cards. Uh, what do you want to start with? Four pip. Yeah, let's look at the four pip. That that's the first four pip that's not standing crazy. orders. Yeah. So it's uh for four droid trooper units. Uh, when building command hand, treat this card as though it has three. When a core droid trooper unit is issued an order with this card, it may choose to return its order to the order pool. If it does, you may return a defeated miniature to the unit no wound tokens with no wound tokens and remove one suppression token. That's uh, it's it's really, really good with B2s. B2s. Yeah. 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 Um, yep. I'm not sure like if there is a if there is a world where like the whole b2 army thing is good like i think this command card will be a large portion of why it is good um so yeah. tech technically right i don't know points wise i'm not i'm not gonna think about points wise 
But sure. technically, you can have seven B2s with him on the board, right? Because Entourage lets him ignore the rank by one. Yes. You you can. The list that I've uh, attempted to put together where like you're kind of playing around with that, I think it's it's likely more of like a, you've got like four B2s and like three Geonosians or something. Okay. Um, or like two B1s, four B2s, and like a Geonosian objective unit or right. something. Um, I was right. just saying technically, though. Yeah, the B2s are so expensive. Um, yeah, well, and that's and, what I mean. And like, yeah, these cards are great for B2s, but the way that you want to field B2s, you're, you're pushing like 100 points almost for the B2 unit. Yeah, so. yeah he does have override. Um, yeah, which makes the range two, you know, T series list B2 a little more um, palatable, clearly. Um, so maybe there's something there. Just the B2 with the ACM and no personal upgrade or like an extra b2 or whatever um, De definitely worth trying i think yeah it's worth looking into um but even that version is still pretty expensive for what you're getting so but yeah this is clearly designed for to be awesome with b2s and it looks like it would be uh, yeah. we sort of the queen yeah yeah go ahead Kyle. sure um sunfac loses direct geonosian warriors a friendly sun fac, I guess. If there's a enemy sun fac, this does not happen to them. Uh, friendly sun fac and Geonosian warrior units gain coordinate Geonosian warriors. When a friendly Geonosian warrior unit with a face up order token begins its activation, it gains one aim and almost certainly one dodge trick. Yeah, it's probably a dodge. I guess it could be a surge. Um, I assume it's not like a standby because that would be ridiculous. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, it's probably a dodge token. If it's not a dodge token, it's a surge token. Otherwise, um, this is pretty good. This is just dumps a bunch of aims on your you know, Geonosians and then gives you order control over them. And if you also have aggressive tactics, you can drop surges on them, which is useful because they don't surge on attack. So, yeah, this seems like the card that you play when like all your Geonosian warriors are in position to attack something and you want to make that hit harder yeah basically it's kind of like coordinated fire it's so like a front agree. loaded coordinated fire fire yeah yeah love it yeah all right let the executions begin one pip uh during the issue order step you may issue up to two orders to friendly droid trooper units at range one during Poggle the Lesser's activation, friendly non-panicked droid trooper units at range one of Poggle the Lesser gain fire support. Poggle the Lesser may make two attack actions during his activation. Yep. Yeah, this card's fine, I think. Uh... Yeah, it's okay. I mean, basically what you're doing is giving... Uh, Poggle the Lesser's ranged attack is one to three with two black, and he searches. So it's, it's so bad. <laughs> it's not good. Basically, what you're doing is you're giving a droid unit surge conversion. You're also on the attack, getting and, to and, go with two and walls. doing it right. You're front loading potentially front loading. Uh, you're you're front loading two attacks at once while yep. getting surge conversion. So and it is a one pip. So you're probably doing it at the front end of the turn. Um, yeah, I mean it's not right. So you would, so you would be like, so if you did have B twos with like the the ACM, you, I mean, and an extra guy, you know, it's not, it's not nothing. It's what six it, black it dice. Pretty, it would hit pretty hard. Yeah, yeah, six black dice, four white, and three red, like with surge. All right, I'll take that. That's that's a lot. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. and notably. Um... He has to attack twice, so like right. you can attack the same, like you can attack the same unit twice, right? right. So it's sort of like Son of Skywalker S yeah. in that regard. Um, yeah, right. It, right. It, it costs you three activations to do it, but you may need that, right? Like, like I think potentially with a a list build with this guy, you're probably not going to have much uh, to stop force users or like a boba or somebody like that. So this this definitely would stop them. Um, Potentially, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, they red saves are red saves, but but like you know, this it, could this could hit pretty hard. It definitely would make them think yeah. twice about a move, right? That would put them 
within range of this. Yeah, for sure. Um, All right. Yeah. Moving on. TLDR, Ooh. I actually really like Chain Oceans. I think they they're seem, really good. They seem on theme. They don't seem like yep. grossly overpowered to me. Um, but okay. I like what they did with them. Yeah. I think I think the overpower thing probably remains to be seen, but they're definitely really cool. Um yeah, they, I guess we'll see with the free the extra free moves, but they they are they are priced. They seem to be priced with that in mind. Yeah, I think so too. I definitely think that um I could see like almost every separatist army potentially taking like well, you should one like squad one. just is like uh this is my unit that like goes and grabs boxes at the 100 percent you know yes. um uh, you miss out a little bit on the order control but i think it's a really flexible tool in contrast to what you have access to now so yeah. I, that's cool yep yeah cool all right so we're on to uh fifth brother and seventh sister um i i really like what they did with her lightsabers what's so going on with the, like seven little... sisters face is is that like an alien thing? I don't. What are you? Th- what, are you what are you talking about? I don't know. I know that like I've seen Re- the Rebels show. The, it's just the coloring. It, it. I don't know. Oh, her coloring. Yeah, I just I don't oh, remember the that face. Coloring. I yeah, heard yeah. base. So did um, I. I heard base as well. I'm like, yeah, I, was, I was looking at the base. I was like, the base looks normal, Kyle. I don't know. Uh... It's just <laughs> sorry. Yeah, the face, the coloring. It's. I don't. This is the nitpick. With... You're like, oh, it's alien. I'm like, I mean, it just looks like a fish tank. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just some I, grass, man. Yeah, um, yeah. Some minor, minor details. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Um, the paint, the paint is strange. Um, but I think these I paint jobs are really good. Let's yeah. put that in perspective here. Um, yeah. No, they do. Listen, when they model and paint, they do great jobs for yeah, sure. They're amazing. Um. All right. All right. So. Uh, number five, bro. Here he's uh he's got 105 as his cost. He's got Dauntless, Block, Enrage 2, Immune Pierce, Six Health, Red uh Defense, Surge to Hit. He's got uh some lightning, range two, hang one on, to two. This is not lightning, this is a spinning lightsaber. Oh, what did I say? I said lightning. <laughs> yeah, no, he's, he's got some lightning. Yeah. Uh, no, spinning lightsaber. Sorry. Uh, yeah. I was thinking that. Anyways, uh, range one to two, three black, impact two, pierce one. And then his, th- oh, that's the throne spinning light. Got it. And then yep. spinning lightsaber, uh, five black, ram two, uh, impact two, and pierce one. <laughs> He's got two training slots and a force slot. Yep. It's a lot of force push with these two. Yeah, we can. <laughs> That's a lot. Let's There's... let's let's get through the stat blocks and then we can talk about how absurd this is. After. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Okay. So seventh sister, she's one ten. She also has two training and a force. She's got jump one, associate fifth brother. Which during army building, this unit doesn't count against the number of operative ranks. <laughs> you may include. Uh. She has block, charge, discipline one, immune pierce, and interrogate. What does Uh, interrogate do, Jay? Oh, yeah, right. While this unit is at range one of an enemy unit, treat that unit's command cards as having one more pip. (laughs) Uh, Five health, three courage. He had two courage, by the way. Uh, Mm -hmm. Red defensive dice, surge to hit. Same. uh, She's got the spinning lightsaber, no ram, but impact two and pierce one, five black, and the throne spinning lightsaber. Sorry, everyone. Uh, Not lightning. Range one to two, three black, impact two, pierce one. So before we get to what I think is on the next thing, do you want to let's just real quick highlight like the differences between these stat blocks and what would be like a quote unquote standard? force user stat block yep because they definitely are mostly worse in small ways um i don't know if they're like 50 percent to 100 percent cost worse but they definitely are like slightly worse the biggest thing is the lightsabers these are effectively like sabine's dark saber as far as offensive yep. potential is concerned obviously yep. ram 2 on fifth brother has potential to up that um they also have a training slot for tenacity which seems like a good idea, especially on Fifth Brother. Um, 
but yeah, they're I mean, their lightsabers are not they're only pierce one, it's only five black dice. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this is these these are definitely worse than it's slightly worse than Commander Luke's, and it's a fair bit worse than like most of the other, you know, lightsabers for what we would consider like right named force users. Well no, you're right, and they're only surging to hit, so like, you know, you're gonna be able to use your blocks, I get or dodges. That's a, you that's a minor thing, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think that the surge to hit does make their ranged attacks significantly less good. They're always these these are always gonna be bouncing off cover. It's yes. like mm -hmm. the same reason that you don't get saber throat of Ventress. Right. Even though she has relentless, it's like this is just this one hundred percent of the time this just bounces off cover. Yeah. Um and then fifth brother doesn't have native charge. Obviously, he does have in range two, which gives him charge once he's been wounded twice, which is not like a high bar. But, um, so, uh, yeah, and they only have one four slot. Yeah, which is the most important four slot, right? Going from zero to one it's, is like it's huge. I, right. I also, <laughs> yeah, I think it's worth noting that there, there's a. I mean, I think the 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 lightsaber is obviously the biggest thing there are some things about them that are better than most stat blocks right now um block, block is a lot better than yep. um, deflect deflect yeah uh which is which is which is a big deal uh um, and, and also not intuitive uh because it seems like the less lesser trained force users are all the ones that have blocked but it's actually better yeah you know grievous is the only other one with block uh, um I, I do think the the health on seventh sister is is a considerable deal as well in the same way it is for like Asajj. Like Asajj is a lot less good because of that one health hmm. loss than does, most. Yeah, years. she's squishy. Yeah, yeah. Asajj uh, is also forty more points. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I look. Um... Anyway, yeah. Interrogate. Obviously, that's that looks like a potentially game changing keyword. There's a lot of times when that's not going to come into play, but. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, people are hyping up interrogate. I don't think it's nearly as good as I, I think it, it obviously in the situations where it is good, it will be amazing. I think 90% of the time that keyword probably doesn't do anything. Um but we'll see. We'll yeah, see. I, I think yeah, it's just most of those like I mean, how many times when you're not running somebody with cunning right where you're like oh okay i know what's going on what where we're heading here we're heading to a roll off right on this round and i think if you can get her within range one of you know then you, you know that that's not happening right well and it's actually better than cunning if she's in range one if she's where she needs to be because yep. in all the situations where cunning would give you priority this gives you priority yes. right but it also gives you a roll off in those situations where like Right, like if you play, a, you know, a two pip and they play a one pip, you get to roll off. There's a fifty percent chance that you yep. can still go first yep. in that situation. Whereas, like cunning would do nothing in that situation. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it it does require her to be at range one of the thing. You know, if you're facing another like playmaker unit, the chance of that happening are actually, I think, reasonably high. If you're up against like it, but some support commanders, it's less likely she's going to be in range to use this. Right. But, right. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Here we go. Um, that's not what I thought was on this slide, but oh. we can talk about the command cards first, I guess. Uh, what would you oh, think? He thought the upgrade was on the slide. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll no, go back, go back, go back. I'm not yeah, going to yeah, talk yeah. about this. Okay, one. all right. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. So, uh, I they, it sort of feels to me like they have kind of like five command cards between. I mean, I guess each one has a their own command card, and then there are like three that are like sort of. I don't know. They they all can give orders to both inquisitors. Yeah, yeah, it's a little weird. Uh, yeah. I guess we'll start with fifth brothers. Uh, you would question me a two pip, um, if fifth brother and seventh sister permanent. When fifth brother gains a name token, seventh sister gains a dodge token. When fifth brother gains a dodge token, seventh sister gains an aim token. When either unit gains an aim or dodge token, the other unit may gain an immobilized token. If they do, the first unit gains an additional token of the same type. Um, That's a lot of words. Yeah. So, I think basically what this means is when fifth brother gets tokens, seventh sister gets tokens. This is like the short version. And it's the opposite. It's not teamwork. 
I also like don't want to be like super nitpicky here, but like isn't this an infinite loop if you want it to be? Yes. I'm sure that they will come out with some form ruling that says that it's not, but yes, this could definitely be an infinite loop. Okay. All right. Uh, as I just want to make sure I didn't miss something. You'd have um, to gain because there's a lot of words on this card. Yeah. You'd have to gain some immobilized tokens to do that because without that part, it's just a one way street. Like when Fifth Brother gains a token, Seventh Sister gains a token, and that's yeah. it. It doesn't go the other way until you start with the immobilized tokens. Um, but yeah. You know, like, because then Fifth Brother gains that aim. Uh, you know, he could get an immobilized token to get a second aim, which gives the sister a uh, a second dodge. She could gain an immobilized token. To, yeah. So actually, I don't think it is a loop because the the extra token is only one direction from Fifth Brother to Seventh Sister. But like, it so doesn't, it doesn't, well, no, because when either unit gains an aim or dodge token, the other may, unit may gain an immobilized token. If oh, they, I see what you mean. Yeah, 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 yeah. If they do, the first unit gains an additional token at the same time. Right. And then that instance that, of gaining that a token is, yeah, that allows you to loop it, right? Yeah, that That's the part that's the loop. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, you, so basically, it would just be like, you're just loading a mobilize on them and then gaining like a ton of aims is like basically what would happen or dodges. Yeah. Or I guess dodges. maybe I, I like, I haven't looked at like the immobilized text, but I assume that you in theory could have infinite immobilized tokens. Um, like, like you can't, there's no cap on immobilized tokens right now. Right. I guess if there is, then this isn't a loop, but um, I don't actually know the answer to that question. It looks like Kyle's looking it up right now. I don't see any cap on. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you could end up with like ten immobilized tokens, and yeah, you wouldn't be able to move, but then you could get like ten dodges on. Right, right but sister. If, but, you, if you've got outmaneuver, like if you've got yeah. like if you take situational awareness, like you can just like make your character like completely immune to anything that's not high velocity or something. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure that that will be FAQ or something. Um, three pip. I care not for your struggles. Well, uh, so, oh, so yeah. loop aside, this yeah. card seems super important for giving dodges to Seven Sister. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's her. Which she needs because she has five health. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway. Definitely only good if you're taking them together, though, right? Like, 100, yeah, it's useless if you're not. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Three pip, I care not for your struggles. Fifth brother and two troopers. Fifth brother may issue orders at range one to five this turn. Units that are issued in order by this card gain Dauntless this round. Kind sure. of situationally interesting. I think the most interesting part about this is that it's it's an operative card that gives orders to multiple units. So if you're, you know, one of Empire's problems traditionally when running operatives is that those operatives are selfish with orders, which if you're running like shore troopers and mortars is kind of a problem. Um, yeah. That's but fair. this allows you to give orders to your shore troopers, basically, if you want. Yep. While running an operative. So, and the same is true of um, Seven Sisters 3 pip also. Yeah. So. Yeah, this card's good. I mean, like, yeah. it's it's fine. Uh, yeah. 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 Good value. Whatever. Daunt Dauntless no longer a keyword. Rebel but, keyword. Yeah. I mean, I know that Black Sun had it too, but yeah um, yeah all right uh we want to do her three pip sure we just talked about it so yeah let's yeah just slide you, in there you hide your fear well seven sister two units seven sister gains demoralized one well enemy units at range one or seventh sister are suppressed they re-roll one fewer die when spending aim tokens okay it's kind of neat i guess yeah i, I, I feel like so this card just says seven sister against demoralize one to me. The like the odds that like you meet all the criteria for like making the second sentence matter <laughs> seems like not only does the unit have to be at range one, it also has to be suppressed and it also has to have an aim token for the text to matter. Yeah, it's yeah. it's kind of silver bullet. Yeah. yeah. Um it just like I guess it, maybe it'll come up, but it seems kind of whatever. It's yeah. still, I mean, I think the best part about this is that it, you can order two extra units. Yeah, I think this. I I think that this text could be blank and it would be fine. You know? Right. Yeah. 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 
Uh, fifth brother, seventh sister. Oh, uh, two pip, unexpected but not uh, no welcome. Fifth brother, seventh sister. When a unit is issued an order by this card, it recovers. When seventh sister is attacking a commander or operative unit with a face down order token during the roll attack dice step, she may gain up to two suppression tokens. She gains one aim token for each suppression token gained in this way. I mean, the recover is good. That's this, the best part. Yeah, yeah it's the yeah. I I'm not sure where this is definitely in like the top three important cards that are in this. I don't know where it ranks in the top three presently. I could see it potentially being number one. I could also I don't know. The recover is important because it's also an out of sequence recover. It's not a recover during the activation, yep. which which allows you to potentially get extra uses out of things like force barrier and stuff like that um yeah and the attack clause is also decent yeah yeah i mean i think between this and her three pip and 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 her whatever that other thing was uh the uh interrogate right they want you to be fighting jedi right like that's the whole idea behind this basically uh, all right, one pip, come and prove it. Fifth brother and se seventh sister. Fifth brother and seventh sister gain indomitable and roll one extra die when defending. If seventh sister is declared as the target of an attack while she has a face-up order token, she gains one dodge token. This is easily the best card in this yeah, set of five. It's so good. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah. Besides, so there's lots of things about this card going on. The first is simply that it's a one pip that gives out two orders. Yep. Um, which are rare. Uh, the other ones I can think of are the Blizzard generic one pip and then Chewie's one pip with Luke. Um, yeah, there's like the Republic synchronized offensive one yeah, and the Separatist right. one too, yep. but they're unusual. Yeah, those give orders to units that matter a lot less. So. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> um, Indomitable, obviously, is just a nice keyword. Mm -hmm. uh, red save units, when they're rolling an extra die, are really difficult to damage. <laughs> um, yeah, this is like da just Danger Sense 1. For it's Danger Sense turn. 1. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, and then uh, the free dodges every time she gets attacked. Um. Obviously, super good, especially on top of the extra defense die. This makes Seven Sister incredibly difficult to kill for a turn, mm -hmm. while giving orders to both of them as a one pip. So, it, yeah. the second part only works while she has a face up, but often with force users, you want to wait anyway. Yeah, yeah no, um, this seems really good in that context. Right. Like, um, it's like it's similar to Fear and Deadman in that, which is it's a great card to play when you want to wait to do something and know that you're going to be able to kind of survive yeah uh what's coming at you while you wait so yeah it's good uh, yeah and what's extra interesting is uh if you combine this with fifth brothers two pip um you know if fifth brothers are already where, where he needs to be you can get two dodges every time uh seventh sister gets a dodge by giving fifth brother an immobilized token so um, if you want, just silly amount of dodges. <laughs> yeah, yeah, crazy. Yep. Okay, Inquis inquisitorious training. Fifth brother or seventh sister only. This unit gains demoralize one when a unit at range one exhausts a a. Uh, force upgrade force. you may roll a red defense die on a block or a surge result cancel the effect the upgrade remains exhausted it is yep. a training five is, points yeah this is not a force upgrade this is a training upgrade yeah uh, I, I have many thoughts on this um so i'm, I'm going to separate this into Balanced thoughts and theme thoughts. Okay. And I want to hear your guys' thoughts too. So let me just open first with theme thoughts and then yep. I'll save the balanced thoughts for after. Sure, 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 sure. Um, 
what's the canon like is is there like a canon example of this happening where an inquisitor just like outright cancels force powers being used because in in my mind like watching inquisitors in their various canon examples which is primarily rebels and the obi-wan show basically what they do is um like intimidate people into finding random jedi and then they use the might of the empire to like shoot them with a zillion stormtroopers um they're hunters right yes they're, they're good they at finding hunters. stuff yeah the the, the the when they actually like face other jedi particularly like named force users um which includes ahsoka she fights both of them at the same time seventh sister and fifth brother specifically and yep. like easily manhandles them i can't think of any examples in that fight scene of them like canceling her ability to use the force um and then reva fights vader obviously in the obi-wan show and he like he doesn't even draw his lightsaber he just like literally throws her around with the force um so this thematically this doesn't really make sense to me in that like inquisitors are kind of second rate force users compared to like the named force users that we currently have in the game and that anytime you see an inquisitor face one of those in any kind of canon example they not only don't seem to be able to just like outright cancel their ability to use the force but they just kind of get their butts handed to them um i'm trying to remember in vader's from... case exclusively by use of the force yeah like <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying like to if... remember in fallen order if they i don't think so they were no. tough they were tough and i don't, fallen I don't order. think they can cancel but you still kicked their butt with Cal Kestis. yeah you did yeah Right, but they also like never canceled your for- Cal's force powers that I. Can I, I don't think so. It's no. it's it's str- there's a lot of things thematically that are strange to me. Besides the fact that we haven't seen them do it, but it's also that like it works equally well on Yoda as it does on, you know, pre Jedi yeah. Luke. Yeah, uh, I would I would I would make the argument I, that that's not entirely true. Well, I the, the, the this success is... chance is the case, regardless of who's using the force power. Let's put it that way. Yes, it is way more effective against a character that does not have master of the force. Sure, but yeah. that's that goes more to balance than like. Uh, yeah, the I'm cancellation just... chance is the same on Yoda well, as it is on right. You know, some <laughs> Joe Schmo, yeah. basically, which feels really odd to me that an Inquisitor could just be like, "Yeah, sorry, Yoda, you can't use, you can't do that." um i don't know i i mean this this is obviously a a upgrade that has been written with the intention of solving a a problem or a perceived problem yeah i I i'm not like inherently against so i guess we can move to like what this means for game balance and stuff I'm not like inherently against being able to cancel force powers. I wish that it wasn't so reliable and so universal. Um, like it'd be nice if it was something like you know, for every for every four, four slot your target has, roll a red dice. If you roll all blocks, then it cancels the power. Because then you only have like a what is that twelve and a half percent chance to actually stop Yoda from doing something. Um, I don't know. I feel like if you're gonna pay for something, but this it should work half the time. Right, and this works two thirds of the time. I this is also, I think, I I have way more problems. I think with this is from like a theme perspective. I think at this point, after thinking about it for a long time, than a balanced one. I think that this is actually like pretty easy to play around for the most part. Uh. I think that's more debatable simply because all force powers, most really all force powers that matter are range one. Yeah. But, um, and the, the for like, let's talk about force push. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Cause yeah, that's, the one Cause that's, that, that's, the, that's the one that the, the, this is going to hit force push, force choke, uh, Jedi mind trick. The, like those are the three that I think. Which is the, interesting. Cause they already hit those. potentially reflexes, potentially mm-hmm. reflexes. Yeah. Um, like those, like this, the amount of times this is going to hit like barrier, which yeah. is really the only, like is pretty low. And by right. the time it hits barrier, it probably won't matter for the yes. most part. Right. Um, it's, it's most relevant for force push. Yeah. Agreed. 
Yeah. Um, and I think part of the reason is that it's most relevant for force push is particularly like if you're using the, well, you're using inquisitors one of two ways, right? Against another force user, you're either using them offensively. Um, and if you're doing that, you're not actually going to be going directly after the force user. Yeah, right. Um, right. You're going to be going after their other units because you don't really need to go directly after the force user because one of the best ways to counter a force user in your lines is to force push them out of melee so yes. you can shoot them. Um, and what this essentially does for Inquisitors is it makes it really difficult to do that to them, right? Especially if you're running two of them at once because I, I don't know exactly how this works when you have two things at range one, but it seems like it gives you two shots to do it. Um, I think... I Yes, I think the the larger um, thing about having two copies of this upgrade on the board is less about whether it procs twice and more about if it procs twice um, and more about the fact that you can actually create a saturated zone that is untouchable from any direction. Right. As yeah. far as force push goes. Right. Um, but, but the point is this functionally makes the Inquisitors themselves very difficult to force push. Yes. Um, it also means that like if if you're running the Inquisitors and you're playing them defensively and someone is trying to attack your lines with a force user, it gives you like all the timing and tempo control over yeah. when stuff happens, which is everything in a force user duel, right? Yeah. Um, it's I'll... rare that force user duels come down to lightsabers. Uh, yep. which is uh, that's just how legion works right it's this isn't shatterpoint you're, you're talking right. about usually a force user plus 600 points of army mm -hmm. fighting if they're fighting another force user against another force user plus 600 points of army or right. 700 points or 700 so. in this case <laughs> yeah um so uh like if if you're if if you're trying to attack somebody's lines and that somebody has inquisitors it's not going to go well for that force user simply because they have all the control over um, like when stuff happens, how your melees go, et cetera. Um, and that's not, a, it's that's because obviously this is a thing, but this is not a force upgrade. So the, the inquisitors themselves can also take and then use force push also. Yes. Right. So they get to like have their cake and eat it too, right? They can cancel your force abilities while still using their own. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind. It kind of is. So if you're run, if this could be run on both of them, right? And I, I like it in the fact that it's an answer to like key positions, Yoda, right? Like, I mean, it it definitely answers that to a degree where, you know, you can't get force. You potentially can't get force pushed off a, of a key positions point, but then you can in turn force push them off of the point right, right. so it, yeah it becomes a, a that's so like, uh, yeah i think i actually want to talk to that point because i think that this is the most important part of this is that um there's a reason yoda costs 230 points or 240 points it's because if he's alive on turn six one of the re one of the many reasons he costs that much yeah, 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 is yeah is that if he's alive on turn six, whether you're playing KP or Intercept or whatever, yeah. he can use Force Push to affect the outcome of the game. And and that goes for Palpatine, that goes for Dooku, it goes for anybody that can pretty much take that card. There is a reason that they are basically universally all at least 160 points after upgrades. Yep. Um, most of them are significantly more expensive than 160. Yes um and if you're taking a unit whose purpose in the game is to use force push or and, force powers generally or force powers generally but i think force push is obviously the one that it gets hit the hardest here yeah um your opponent being able to take a Five point upgrade on a 110 point unit who also has force push so let's say they're 120 or 125 with this upgrade they're getting to do the thing that you get to do that you don't get to do that you now don't get to do right, right? Yep. um and they get to do it for like 80 points cheaper 80 yeah. points cheaper while shutting like i i mean i i honestly think like i 
I would be willing to like entertain this conversation more if these guys didn't like maybe didn't even have a force slot and they had this upgrade. I think that that would be at least more interesting. Or if this um, was a force upgrade, or if it, they only have one force slot. Yeah, totally. Um, and <laughs> I also like th this card. Like, this is very corner Casey, but like this card is like Rex Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> it, like straight up destroys him uh because it turns his one pip off too but um yeah with demoralize yeah i mean it, yeah. it 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 messes up kenobi it messes up both malls who are highly depend dependent on standby play yeah. right like like the the force power fear is presently three points and all it says on it is demo one right is it one or is it like two it's one it's one yeah and that's a force power and it's three points yeah if that were training upgrade i think you'd take it every time yeah probably um and i just uh yeah i don't know this card is obviously very good it's an auto stable to the inquisitors um yeah it's it's gonna have I think that the nice thing uh, is that we don't need to worry about the ramifications of this card for eight months or however long it's going to take. Them yeah, to the, game, the, the game could look very different. Yeah, the time they come out. You know, um... but the, this if if this were to like enter the game in today's environment, this essentially means that Inquisitors get to dictate all of the terms when they're facing other Force users. Yeah. Uh, I... I think I would probably go as far as to say that any force user that clocks in, like, I think any force user again might cease. I mean, just like not really be at a competitive table anymore. Um, Anakin, because I think most of the time you can play him in such a way where you don't have to interact with the card, and Vader just is very powerful and does a lot of stuff i think he, i think he can kind of barrel through it will hit him and it will hurt him but he's still going to be really good all of the other force seizures are so dependent on their force powers to make things happen that i don't think you can chance taking a 200 point unit with your opponent potentially showing up to the game with this upgrade i agree and this is on the back of force users that are already kind of seeing a decline in variety right like there's I'd say there's like what four force users that people play seriously right now: Yoda, Anakin, um, Ahsoka, and Commander Vader. Um, yeah, I would I would maybe put like Shadow Collective Mall and okay. and like in like maybe like a B tier of that bucket. Yeah, they're, they're definitely cool. not up there, but like uh, it sees more play than the rest of the other force users, right? Right. Um, but this this essentially just further. You know, on top of the the Vluck nerf and the other changes, this essentially just further narrows that field to like, yeah, I, I don't see a reason to take after if this if, if this clearly things could look different when Inquisitors actually come out because this could be a long time away. It could be one or one or two balance passes away. Who knows? Um, but if this were to drop like today, I would the only force users I would take are like you mentioned. I think I would personally even be hesitant to take Commander Raider. Um, but I'd take Anakin and I would take Inquisitors. I mean, I think <laughs> I, I I don't know how far down this rabbit hole we want to go, but um, I think this upgrade could not exist and Inquisitors might be the, the only Force users I might entertain taking moving into the future yeah. given, yeah. given, the, given, given their cost. points cost. Yeah. Um, well, and I think that's that's a good point because I think it's almost two separate conversations. It is. Yeah. It's it's There's... hard to separate the two, I think. It is. But... but but yeah yeah it's th there's this upgrade which by itself regardless of cost efficiency whatever of the inquisitors themselves just hedges out the existence of other force users yep um and i think it's where i mean you talked about it already mark right but the reason that force powers are so expensive or are so expensive to access is because they do what you need them to yeah, right. there's there's not a variability in whether a force power is going to work. There's there's not a fail um, rate. There's not a fail rate, and that's why it costs 160 to 200 points to access that. Even though that 160 to 200 point body, like the unit card itself, is often not that spectacular, right? 
um, at least for that cost. So, um, you know, just this existing hedges that out, but also totally separate just for like the unit cards and the command cards that you're getting and the fact that they have their own four slots, the Inquisitors are like, I'd say at least 30 points under costed each. Um, yeah, I think. And that's if you consider their weak lightsabers and, you know, some of the other things that separate them from the 150 plus point force users. Mm. I think I could entertain them at 130. I, I, I'm not, I, I think it, it would at least be more of a conversation. You know, if, if these units were 145 points with force push and this upgrade, I think it would be a little bit more reasonable. I, I don't look, I don't have a problem with them pushing or aggressively costing units at all, to be honest. Um, these units are not aggressively costed. They are absurdly costed. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say, honestly. Like, I, I said this in the Discord the other day, and I was surprised I didn't get banned for it. I was just like, this is absurd. This is crazy. It is It is actually insane. Um, I, like, I've, never, I've never seen a unit that is so obviously cheap yeah uh, on release the the one i can think of that is closest is storm hres um and that's I, you know if they're part of this same conversation that should be telling <laughs> yeah. and and that was like 10 10 to 14 points probably under costed yeah. these guys are like 30 yeah th these guys are at least 25 to 30 i mean yeah. I... right and so just for everyone at home like you can literally load them up and they're still not at 130. So like a fi the fifth brother, you could put tenacity, the training on him and force push and he's at 126. I mean, like, like I know that this is not a one for one comparison, but like Sabine Wren <laughs> costs 125 points. Okay. Without the dark saber, without the dark saber, yeah. which has dauntless and the same lightsaber that these guys have on it. That is an additional 15 points. She's 140 points, still courage to like no force powers, no force powers, uh, doesn't have a five point training upgrade that nullifies er every force user in existence around her. I, I don't know. I just, yeah. It, and it, Sabine is like decent. And Sabine, yeah. I mean, I I think she could probably use a little help these she days. Could, she could look a little, like a little bit of a cut, but she's playable right now. Yep. But like Darksaber Sabine, I think coming in at like 120 after a points cut would be reasonable. And that's still more expensive than these guys are who have force users on, force slots on top of that. And, yep. and five command cards. I, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, let's keep going. We got a lot. Sorry. We do. We could probably yeah, talk yeah. about this till the cows come home. So. We definitely yeah. could. Um, and we probably will on future episodes. Yep. Tune in. Tune oh, in. yeah. <laughs> eight, eight, six to eight months from now. These yeah. guys were announced. Yeah. Commandos. Cool. Yeah, the sculpts are good. I like I like the guy with the rifle doing the uh, sexy Flanders pose as he's shooting. <laughs> yeah. So we didn't get any like... Um, unit cards or anything for these guys but they did say something cool and i don't know if this means that they're getting the loadout keyword or what but they basically said that you could like tailor equip like each one of these guys in the squad to have like like particular heavy weapons and stuff i i don't know it sounded cool i don't know if maybe they were hyping it up or huh. whatever but they were like you can customize the squad so that they're like you know doing very specific things and stuff uh, oh, that's they, cool. they didn't they didn't go into that it in like cool. a high amount of detail obviously but, yeah that's that uh, certainly looks cool yeah, yeah. that's neat yeah. uh all right next yeah more commandos oh whoa, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. let's back up one page let's back up one page. yeah so a we're getting delta force or delta squad with the commandos they also sort of very quickly pass by that Bad Batch will be releasing alongside Commandos or at the ah. same time. They didn't specifically yeah. get into a lot of details on Bad Batch. We didn't get any previewed rules for Bad Batch, which a lot of people were surprised by. I'm yeah. certainly surprised by Well, seeing as they've been announced since Adepticon. Adepticon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe that got delayed or something. I don't know. They yeah, didn't seem be. like they wanted to talk about it. So um, 
whatever. Yeah, but, there could be something going on there. Yeah. But it is it is notable. It's not like they didn't talk about them at all. They are coming out around the same mm-hmm. time as commandos or with them. So yeah. nice. Yeah. All right. What were these guys called again? Range troopers. Range troopers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, those th- for those of you who don't know, these were f- from solo. They were the units on top of the train. Um, listen, I, I, I'm not knocking this. I'm glad I'm glad they're coming out. I would just have liked mud troopers. Like I thought that I think that, that would like have been a cooler, like a, a role that's not as filled choice. The entire roster. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think it's hard to say what these guys are gonna do. Um, that isn't yep. already in the empire. It's w- worth noting that Schick, uh, Will Schick, uh, kind of said that these are probably not core. He didn't like explicitly say that, but it was alluded to on the painting stream. Um, so these are not like a fifth core, op- fifth, yeah, fifth core option. I guess yep. not including the Pikes and Blacks on, but hey, um, interesting. I mean. Because if they're if they're special, I mean that's seven. In special forces, that's a lot of dudes. Is is this like one unit, or is this just like alternate poses and stuff? I mean, the two guys on the left are obviously the heavy weapon options. Yeah, um, the dude with his rifle up here looks like the unit leader. Probably, yeah. 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 Um, so if they're not core, I mean, yeah, there's we get, there's a lot of special forces and yeah, empire. There, are, there are. I just, I guess, like, just like, kind of like looking at the heavy weapons. Like, one of them looks like a T twenty one. The other one looks like some sort of repeater, a fifty cal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I it, it what it looks like is the Rebel DLT. Frankly, yes. Um, I guess it would have been more interesting for them to be core, but I guess we don't really know. Yeah, it just looks like, frankly, another nondescript range four. Uh, core slash special forces option for empire is what this says to yep. me presently um yep. yeah 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 it'll be inter- interesting to see how they differentiate them from like death troopers or short yeah in that context yeah but we'll see they look cool the models look great yeah these jobs on these are like painting white slash gray is really difficult in, in a way that looks interesting i love these paint jobs yep so f- f- whoever did these paint jobs props to you they look amazing um this thing crab droid. it's a crab droid was this like in a clone wars episode or something uh, yeah i have no I idea i think so it looks interesting i guess this this uh picture also seems like very like pre-development yeah, yeah this yeah, is a right yeah this is a render yeah um, yeah okay sure sure neat obviously separate just crab droid guy on the discord will be happy yeah <laughs> uh um, rebel this is these are the rebel saboteurs saboteurs um, that's which right. which are supposed which sound like a new unit um, yeah this is not a reprint yes uh, um they look cool yeah we didn't really get any information outside of like rebel saboteurs come in they uh probably i hope that like uh we get them along the same lines as like saw and, and company um just because like that feels like it maybe falls in line with that, but yeah. Is that Han in the middle? I thought so too, but I, I don't. The Loth cat on his base suggests to me mm-hmm. probably not. Yeah. That's <laughs> uh, fair. I don't know. Um, I don't think that's his gun either. No, but it does. It also kind of looks like um. Uh, what's that guy's name that Han hangs out with in Solo? That's gonna back it. Now. Back it, yeah. Like with uh-huh. back it with the dual pistols, Could potentially. Be. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, this could be cool. Yeah. I, I like that Rebels are getting more stuff. Yeah, I mean, it, they they look cool. They look yep. kind of like very like cowboy esque, right? Mm-hmm. Which is totally. which is cool. Yeah. Yep. I I think that's in my like just my opinion. Star Wars is at its best when it's like that cowboy samurai space like, western. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's that's when it's at its best. So so that's exciting. Yep. Uh, another scope for Vader. So, the, the yeah, um, this I think reprint. Th- so this is one of the several figures that they showed us. This is the new hard plastic version of Commander Vader. 
and that was prefaced with they're doing everything in soft plastic as hard plastic moving forward that's like their current project good um amazing which yep. which i think maybe going back to like kind of what we opened with with um like delay like whatever is going on regardless of what's going on like this game is like they clearly are planning they're, they're not going to redo the range to drop the game right and yeah. anytime soon right? oh this is, this is like a 10-year plan like, oh there's yeah, no yeah. way you know i just i just i've heard a lot of shenanigans oh i and haven't blames and stuff yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah. i hope and, i i hope i didn't give off that vibe that no, is not uh, what i think at all i don't yeah. i don't think so either i just like every time i walk into the discord it's like we're dying. Uh, we're not I, getting releases for the next it's six just months, it's like know? three it's like three um, people but yeah i mean i i think it's a good idea i think the idea of pulling commander vader and commander luke out of the core sets and making them available as individual units isn't a bad idea so i'm well, not I'm actually thinking. sure that's what's happening uh, i, I re-release the core set maybe like they did set. mcp yeah. Yeah, yeah that that makes sense um uh along that same line new stormtrooper sculpts that are going to be in hard plastic so that's yeah. good i'm so excited about this like i this is one of my biggest I mean, those look. I came from like Warhammer 40k yeah, and yeah, the Legion, yeah. and I I stayed for the game, which was amazing. But it really like it was hard in the initial days of Legion to get over the soft plastic sculpts. I, oh, yeah, Kyle, sure. you and I, man, I came from fantasy, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I was so happy about the soft <laughs> plastic because I dropped my stuff all the time, and so for me it was like, well, that's not gonna break. Great. I'll just keep yeah. moving on. I mean, you, know? you can step yeah. on the soft plastic. And yeah, it's like and you're fine. completely fine, you know. Yeah. Uh, so then we had an operative Luke and Commander Leia. I, I like the new Commander Leia. That's way more Endor than the other one. That's her just in that one meeting, that one time dressed like yeah. that, you know. So, um, yeah, this is great. It's it's weird that they did operative Luke versus Commander Luke. Right, because uh, operative his sculpt is actually already pretty good. Yep. The Commander Luke sculpt is the one that is... It's showing it's, its age. Yeah. 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 I mean, overall, like just I think redoing the entire yeah. OG range. Like I think I think the phase one clones were plastic too, right? They're soft plastic, yeah. 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 yeah so obviously they're all plastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, soft plastic. Yeah. And, you know, my my Dooku could really use a lightsaber that is actually straight. Listen, I think <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean <laughs> It's great they're moving. I think it made sense at the time when FFG was doing everything. It's a cheaper way to do it, and it's yeah. it's you know, and it made it it was. It's just unfortunate. It totally made sense at the time. It did, yeah. yeah. And I think for me, it's what got me into it. And I I wonder, as much as I do love the hard plastic, don't get me wrong, the details are way better. I understand all the benefits from a hobby perspective, people who like Legion seems to attract people who have never played other games before. Yeah. And so the soft plastics were a much easier hobby ask of them than 100%. hard, hard plastic is, you know? So it's, yeah. you know, that's, that was always like, it's funny. Cause we were talking about this at the tournament on Saturday, somebody from 40 K came over and was talking to me and was asking me how it was different. And I go, you know, the answers I used to give people are different than the answers now because the answers before were like, well, there's soft plastic. So it's much easier to put together and, and you don't break your models. Uh, you don't roll as many dice as you do in 40K. And now, like, we're creeping on both of those. So it's, it's no, like, we're not. 40K, you roll literally. I like understand. Dozens, if not more than. Yeah, yeah. Dice but, sometimes. but I know, I know. But yeah. it's still like, oh, yeah, you only roll like, excuse me you only roll like five or six dice you know you know what i mean per attack and now potentially you know you can get up to 20 but which is closer to it's not exactly 40k numbers but it's you yeah. know you know what i mean yeah um but yeah and then new rebel uh rebel troopers troopers these are yeah. these are rebel commandos specifically. commandos that's right this is the commando squad yeah yeah, because there's no Z6 and there's a guy right. with a rifle and yeah. that looks like a saboteur on the left. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Like the Twi'leks, those are cool. They specifically called out that there was gonna be a bunch of alien heads in the box and ah. like and like you're gonna be able to like 
and build entire squads of aliens as opposed to like having the the like one token duros yeah <laughs> rebel trooper yeah. squads right Is yeah it, you know like that um, may, it makes sense i'm i'm on board for that my hope personally it, with redoing these boxes is they maybe fold the like the rebel trooper upgrade packs into these boxes as options when they do this i think that would be a really cool win in that like i don't want to like i would love to rub dlts and all my rebel trooper units i'm not buying six yeah. specialist boxes to do that with my alternate faction yeah it'd be nice you if know? they combine everything together right yeah 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 uh, so i hope that when they do that they take that opportunity i think yeah. uh kyle maybe next episode we could do the battle forces we are we've been going it's for late a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've we been going to, we for a while this whole thing at once yeah. um but yeah no listen i i think it is my job to talk and to nitpick things but i would say i'm very much overall positive like that's all positive stuff whether or not i agree with smaller choices like free jump three that's you know that's just something that we do um and but you know uh overall super positive yeah i'm really encouraged to see those reprints yeah yeah i think i think the longevity of the game is is definitely not in question um yep. you know i uh I do think that uh I guess like you say, Jay, we we maybe as commentators of the state of the game have, dare I say, an obligation to maybe stand up and say something when things oh. things look Yeah. But little, at the at yeah. the same time, would you really be listening to this podcast if we just showed all that stuff and went like, yeah, cool. And then just moved <laughs> on? Like what would there you wouldn't, wouldn't be much you wouldn't even that. be listening you know yeah, yeah and i'm sure just like boba fett you know whenever this stuff comes out and i play it and get it on the table i may change my mind like I, it's okay i can do that too yep you know yeah i, I love it. that's that's my yeah. favorite thing people get mad about like when we change our minds but jesus yeah man like i'm 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 a human i see things i i change my mind it's, it happens it's good that's how you should be you should be open to having your mind changed about things. Yep. Boba good. Boba real. Yeah, good. yeah, he is. Boba real good. And now you can run him with two Inquisitors at the same time and still have enough to get 10 activations of beef. Because that's the thing that fits. Uh yeah, I literally what I did was I the list that the for Mike last week we went over Kyle and I went over my double bounty mm. list and cleaned it up a little bit for the tournament. But basically, I just took Boba and Bosco and just slotted in the two Inquisitors. It was like, and there we go. <laughs> that, that's yeah, real, you, you that's you really don't have good. To, you don't have to take Boba out. You can run. Well, yeah, just take Bosco. No, Bo, no, Bosco I kept, is super replaced. Yeah, I kept because I have Krennic and Death Troopers, so I kept them in. But like, yeah, I, I could. Yeah, you could. But I was. It was just. like like if i wanted to just you know like anyways just interesting yeah. yeah yeah it's tough to like i mean it's tough to look at list specifics with some of these units when yeah points could be totally different by then you know things could be in a totally different context yeah like it, i started making some acquisitors lists and i was like this is ridiculous and then it's like okay well this could be totally different in eight months from now too so it also could totally not be different it could totally not be different if um <laughs> if it is not i think i think that that is the most likely scenario that we're looking at is that that's it, that's that's the baseline yeah well and i if that's if that's the case just listen to this list real quick because this is totally what i'm playing eight months okay. from now if nothing mm -hmm. has changed except that yep. Inquisitor's release imperial officer boba fett with c's fifth brother with push and training uh, seven sister with push and training, three stormtroopers with T21s, and a specialist, and three sniper strikes, ten activations, Ugh. something like that. It's it's Boba and both Inquisitors with ten activations. Oh, I hate everything about that. Good <laughs> God, yeah, that's gonna be so good. We'll see. Like like I said, who knows? Stuff could change in between now and then. I just well, the only yeah. question I would have is just like um, command hand. Like you're gonna have some problems with that, but like I, you know, I, I think the one I think slot is your hardest one. I yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I think I think there's an argument for just the Inquisitors, right? With like oh, what sure. I did, yeah. where I just slotted them into with Krennic Death Troopers. You got a lot of beef behind them, and then they go and 
you know, whenever you face a force user, they go mess them up. <laughs> like, no force users here today. All right, all right, all right. You ready? Conspiracy theory. Okay. Go ahead. Man, I thought we were ending the show, Jay. No, the no, devs. We're, we're going the devs conspiracy. are Sith. They hate Force users, <laughs> and they want them all to die. These Inquisitors no. are pretty good against other Sith. I mean, I honestly think so. I'm just kidding, everybody. That was a joke, obviously. They're not Sith. Well, I guess it's on theme that the arrival of the Inquisitors coincides with the disappearance of the Jedi. Yep. I mean, I think I've said this on cast a few times before, but like when you're playing somebody that has a Force user that is like significantly better than you at this game, it feels very impossible to win. Yep. Um, and I think that it is... I, I don't know if that's a problem from a balanced slate type deal, but I can see how at a bare minimum could be perceived to be one. Hmm. Um, and I feel like, again, the, the whole thing feels like a proposed solution to a problem that is there or perceived. Sure. Yeah. I think it's hard, you know, I, and Mike, we, uh, you talked about this, I think, in our chat and we brought it up in the beginning. But like, I think the rest from releases isn't a bad thing because I think it's hard to even see what if there are real problems because the meta is shifting so fast as things come out. You're like, oh, I don't even know if that was really a problem. Like, I, I it's hard to tell because now this new thing is, and no one's playing it anymore. Right. Like you really as much as we see as we do see uh, uh, Blizzard Force winning tournaments locally, you know, in local scenes, you're just not seeing it as much. And so, like, it's hard to, like, judge what's going on. And you know what I mean? There's a lot of stuff. It, it's just very strange. Well, and there's a lot of things that are, like, exist in the game that, like, as a competitive player, I am cognizant that are probably good that people just aren't playing. Like, mm. like Tempest, yeah, you know, Dark Troopers, like, people just didn't, aren't bringing them. And and like that's obviously a current medical, but like, um, there there are just there are so many knobs and you know, gears yeah. and and whatever that are constantly being tuned and like, you know, like we just saw I think this weekend over in Europe, like somebody brought like a twelve or thirteen activation Ewok list and won like a hundred person tournament or something, um. You know, it's it's possible we haven't seen an Ewok list piloted to its full potential yet, right? And yeah. and part of this is like all of these things that are good, like we just like they have to be good and also in the right hands often to be seen for what they really are. Agree. And and and, and I think perhaps too often you get one or the other and not both when yep. we're talking about things yes. that are signal flares for being problems, right? Yes. Um, and so I think bringing that kind of back to the discussion we were talking about before, like, I think it's hard to determine where problems actually lie if your sense of what the meta actually is or maybe should look like isn't actually like based in reality because i don't think any one person can tell you what the reality of what the what the actual meta for this game should look like in a perfect world to this day part of it is because of the release schedule and part of it is because we just don't get enough games yeah yeah um yeah I yeah so i i think it's great and honestly based on last year what we saw last year and if they don't make any points changes uh in october or any errata in October, I don't think they will before before Worlds. Well, they did one in December last year. That's when the last one Or was. December. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It used to be October. Uh, yeah, yep. this December. December now. So if they yeah, if they don't make any changes by December, then I, I don't see us having changes before Worlds because they very much were opposed to making changes in January and February of last year. So balance changes they definitely yeah, made balance yeah. changes but yeah 
<laughs> they definitely changed the game completely. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, or the year before, maybe. I don't know. What am I thinking of? 2021 was a uh, the last like quote unquote FFG style update for the mm. balance stuff. Maybe I'm just talking uh, crazy. Last... What am I thinking about? Oh, they didn't make. Uh, that's what I'm thinking about. They didn't make uh, changes to Blizzard Force before Worlds. Right. And they and they had said because they you know something they did not want to yes they didn't right. want to shake things up too much right which I was forgot viewed, they made which was an viewed entire... as ironic at the time because they literally just changed that's right that's all right. of the core rules they did not Worlds. change so then the game you know and love I'm uh, man I'm getting tired just ignore the last ten minutes basically of me talking because I right. clearly have no idea what I'm talking about right. I, I'm actually just gonna cut this whole section because that was crazy talk. No, nah, you should leave it in. I will. Yeah. Okay. I just. Right. How about we close it out though? I don't cut anything. I never crazy. cut anything. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Close. Close it down. All right. We are the notorious scoundrels. I'm Kyle. I'm Jay. And I'm Mike. Stay fresh, cheese bags. Something funny here. No fruit, Matt. I'm not into it today. All right. Uh, you you've been full of all all sorts of nice witty one liners. I don't know. Uh, I'm tired now. I used up all my energy on the front <laughs> half. <laughs> would you would you say that you're being shut down by a, a inqu- inquisitorious training presently? That's Kyle. Yeah. <laughs> Did He's... I roll a block or a surge? <laughs> yeah, I, Kyle's always canceling my force powers during this podcast. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, bye, everybody. Thank you.